Hey, good afternoon. This is Pete from FigLife.com, and today I'm going to be trying a fig for the first time called Coldedam Gigantina. And this, of course, is a, a Coldedam variety, um, so it has that nice, rich berry flavor that the Coldedam varieties are known for. Uh, but what sets it apart from the other Coldedams is that it is a little bit larger. And I didn't look up the translation, but I'm pretty sure that's the reason for the name Gigantina, probably that it's it's a little bit larger. Um, but uh, but anyway, it's my my first fruit off this tree, first year tree. I actually have two of them, and they're both ripening figs at about the same time. Uh, it's mid October, so this is a, a late variety. Um, and uh, but but at least I'm getting some figs off a of first year tree, so I got to be thankful for that. So let's go take a look at Coldedam Gigantina. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Pete, FigLife.com. And today I'm looking at a fig variety that I've never tried before, and that's Coldedam Gigantina. Uh, and this is supposed to be like a very large version of Coldedam Blanc, um, it, I think. So, but it's distinct variety. It's a distinct variety from Coldedam Blanc. Uh, but it's one of the Coldedams. Um, a little larger than the others and i think uh, light colored skin so i'm really hopeful that this will that this will taste really good because the cold of dawn varieties uh, although they ripen late um they are some of the best tasting varieties out there just generally speaking and uh, i think i can pick i'm gonna pick both of these this one's a little smaller so this one um kind of a, a little smaller than normal i think for cold of dawn uh, gigantina <clears throat> But this one here is, is getting pretty big, and I, and I think this is probably ripe now. So let me, let me go ahead and pick that. That's a pretty big fig right there. Uh, let's look at the tree. Um, so this is a first year tree, and look at that. Really tall, that's, uh, that's probably like nine feet at least. Um, and it's actually got multiple uh, little kind of trunk or branches on it. Um, so this thing has put on a lot of growth, and I, I am getting some figs off of it too. So a lot of growth and um, some reasonably good pr productivity from Cold Dom Gigantina, so I'm really excited about this. I actually tried growing this tree um, last year and all my cuttings failed, unfortunately. So this year is my first year successfully growing uh, Cold Dom Gigantina. I'm getting some fruit from it. And actually I've got two Cold Dom Gigantina trees. I've got one, that one I just showed you, um, which I picked these two figs from just now. And then I have a, a second one that I have down in my grow room, and um, I'm not gonna bother recording that one, uh, but I did pick this fig off my grow room Gigantina uh, just a, a couple minutes ago. So I'll be able to compare, and again, this one looks a little bit small, um, you know, a little bigger than this one, but not as uh, not as big as this, which I think is more typical of this variety. But um, I've got a grow room ripened one and then two outdoor ripened ones. So I'll also be able to maybe do a comparison of the, the quality of the fig given those two different grow conditions, uh, which is something I'm kind of uh, experimenting with uh, during the end of this grow season here in 2021 uh, here in Northern Virginia. So um, let me take these out of the organza bags and go get my scale. All right, I took the organza bags off and I got my scale. Uh, so let me go ahead and weigh these things. This is the big one, 82 grams. That's pretty hefty. Probably, that is probably my largest Col de Dom fig uh, of the season. There's the small one that was grown outside, 30 grams. And the grow room fig, 31 grams. So pretty much the same weight as that, that other one. Hey, one thing uh, that I noted here these are the outdoor ones and look at the eye on those uh you know obviously much more water you know more humidity out here and then look at the eye on this grow room fig really tight actually and actually it's got a uh, the eyes filled with this uh bead of um dried honey there too so 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 it's actually closed with that honey in there um <clears throat> so that's just uh an interesting note there and then you see quite a bit of cracking on the skin um, 
on both of those and then and then none of that on here so some obvious differences um in the fig uh is two of the same you know same variety outdoors indoors um some pretty clear differences there um in terms of what they look like uh, and the, the different grow conditions so let me go ahead and cut these open all right i cut these open <clears throat> and they're all looking pretty good actually uh i'd say that looks looks ripe to me um this is the big one that looks really good here's the small one that was outdoors you can see that looks pretty good too kind of a <laughs> kind of a weird uh, way that it ripened there or grew weird, weird way that it grew grew they grew like sideways or something um, and then here's the one that grew in the grow room so you can see a little bit of a different sort of look to the inside of that one um, also looks ripe though uh, but just a, a, a different sort of look to the inside um, it looks really juicy or syrupy maybe it's a, be a better word so I think all of these will taste good. Uh, I am curious to see how the the taste of the, the one that was in the grow room compares to these ones outside, but they all look good. So let me try these. All right. Yeah, these look good. Let me try this big one first. I th Honestly, I think the big one's gonna taste the best. That's my prediction here. We'll see. Let me cut up these. Let me cut up these other ones too. And I'll just leave that one. All right. So this is Coldadom Gigantina. Mm, really good. Um, good. Uh, good sweetness and. Um, a little bit of berry flavor. I wouldn't say like a strong berry flavor. So like like moderate sweetness and uh, kind of like a moderate berry flavor. Really, really um, juicy, but maybe maybe watery is a better. Watery means like watered down. It doesn't necessarily taste watered down, but it tastes really liquidy. Like it's got a lot of a lot of juices in it. Um, and then unfortunately, I can also taste a little more of the skin. Than, than I would normally taste. And I've been noticing that on a lot of different varieties is as it, as it really cools off here and these figs are ripening in just cooler weather, um, I'm noticing a lot of more, more skin textures and skin flavors that, that aren't really all that great. Um, so I'm getting a little bit of skin, not flavor, but skin texture on this fig. It's just a little more like, like crunchy, like not crunchy, but like, like, meaty like meaty the skin is a little bit more meaty or something and um just not the greatest sort of texture to the skin um just and that's just that's not a reflection on the variety really that's just a reflection on it's really cooled off here and and, I, and now i'm ripening figs in cooler temperatures and also that's 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 going to result in um less sweetness and less less flavor in the fig as well so the fact that it's got as much flavor as it does right now um october 15th northern virginia um, not a lot of temperature, not a lot of heat, not a lot of sun anymore. Um, that is, uh, you know, that is actually a positive. I mean, this is, this is a, you know, a good tasting fig, certainly for this time of year. Yeah. Let me try this smaller one that was ripened outdoors. Yeah. A little more sweetness in that one, actually. Um, and I'm not getting as much of the um, the skin texture on this one. So this one actually is pretty good. All right. So let me try this one that was ripened indoors. I really am not sure what to expect with this because some of the ones that have ripened indoors for me have been great. Like the, I think I've said this before, but the Col de Dame Noir that I ripened indoors was like one, made probably the best tasting fig I've had all year. Um, but then, uh, but then, Numerous other varieties have just been kind of like so-so, like not that great um, from indoor ripening. So let me let me try this one. Hmm. Yeah, that one's just uh, it's okay, it's okay. It's just kind of so-so for me. I actually prefer. 
Let me finish. Let me finish. I gotta finish, right? <laughs> All right. So, of those three, the one that I preferred actually was that small one that was ripened outdoors because um, it had a nice sweet flavor uh, with some berry and um, it didn't really have a bad skin uh, texture associated with it. The big one is good, but it's got a little bit of uh, extra skin texture that I'm not super hot on. And then the outdoor ones, in this case, the outdoor ones actually uh, did outperform, uh, did taste a little, well, the small outdoor one definitely tasted better than the, the indoor one, um, but I don't know, maybe the indoor one did taste better than this big one, just because of the skin texture. I wasn't I wasn't super happy about the skin texture, so I'd give it in that order. The small outdoor one, number one, the uh, indoor one, number two, and then the big outdoor one, number, uh, bring up the rear, number three. But I am still happy to be getting figs here on October 15th, though. That's uh, that's nice. So that's a uh, gold cold dome gigantino. And by the way, those are my first figs uh, ever off first year trees. So, um, you know, I would expect these to be earlier next year um, if I were growing them here next year, and also. Uh, probably have a little better, better flavor next year as well. So, uh, you know, as the tree ages, it usually uh, produces better fruit. So, yeah, it was Cold Adam Gigantina. Hopefully you enjoyed this, this uh, video. If you did, please hit subscribe and check out my website, www.figlife.com. Thank you.